everybody. Welcome to the Linux Cast. I'm your host, Matthew Weber. I'm joined by Martin Burke. How you doing, Martin? Well, doing well, Matt. Thanks. How are you? Oh, I'm having a hell of a day. I'm ready for it to be <laughs> over. Um, just mainly because uh, my, the first week we did this, I talked about my football team, um, which is the Philadelphia Eagles. They are god-awful. They're so bad. <laughs> They lost twenty-seven to seventeen to one of the worst teams in the NFL. It's horrible. Anyway, so that's my how my day's going. Um, <laughs> are you, how about you, Martin? How are you doing this week? Yeah, not too bad. Um, I've actually uh, installed Manjaro on KDE on my PointBook Pro. Um, it, it's looking quite responsive, to be fair. Um, on a fresh boot, it's using about nine nine hundred and sixty gig um, megabytes of RAM. Um, and 1.2 gig out to the 3.7 with Firefox open. Um, it does seem pretty responsive, but time will tell once I install a few more programs and and, and giving it a run for its money, so to speak. Mm. How about I, yourself? I watched a, a video of somebody using the Arm Manjaro on a, on a Pine phone. It looked really sluggish on that. Um they always seem to. They, they, they'll post videos and it, it's like that doesn't look responsive at all. Whether it's out slightly, I, I don't know. But, yeah, proof is in the pudding. Yeah. Well, maybe I'm going to have to get one of those Pinebook Pros one of these days and give it a try out. Um, so I've been oh. uh, I've been theming BSPWM because I've been doing some uh, window manager hopping again. So... Um, despite i i3 is my you know daily driver but i've been trying to kind of open the horizons up a little bit um so i've been trying to get bspwm to look like what i want it to look like i've also been going through and doing a little bit of configuration on my i3 stuff just tweaking some um some key bindings and stuff so like now i got it so they can hit super and O, and it will open up super you know obs and audacity at the same time on specific workspaces so you know I, when i record my oh, video right, I yeah. that one key binding the programs open up on the workspace i need them to be on it's really cool um oh, and i've also been trying to figure out how to get some obs key bindings uh to be system-wide specific so i don't have to be within obs for their key bindings to work um i haven't quite figured that out yet cool um so if you want to get in contact with us you can do so uh we just move the contact information around each week. We never seem to figure out where we, we want to put it. We either put it at the beginning or after. It doesn't matter. If you want to get in contact with us, you can do so at the Linux cast is the email address. Um, that's not the email address. That's the Twitter. Button. I really got it. <laughs> My head is not in the right place for this. At the Linux cast on Twitter. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at MTWB. Martin is, is at, at Martin Twit to you. You can find those links in the show notes. You can subscribe to all of our feeds uh, and such at the linuxcast.org. That just transfer you, transfers you to our um, anchor page because I'm much too lazy to have a, an actual website like a normal person. Um, you can follow. You can also contact me via email at linuxcast, the linuxcast at gmail.com and on Facebook at facebook.com slash the Linuxcast. And you also can subscribe to the Linuxcast on YouTube, where you'll find this podcast along with several other videos that I post every week. Basically, they're all nonsense, but, you know, you, you might find something you like there. Um, so, the way we structure the show is we have one big, gigantic uh, news or topic each week. But first, we jump into two uh, links that we choose, one each. And Martin, you have the first link this week. Yeah, I caught my eye earlier. It was a Pine Phone KDE Community Edition. Uh, pre-orders for it are starting December the 1st. Now, if it's like the Manjaro um, uh, um, Community Edition, it was $150 and you get 16 gigabytes EMC storage and 2 gigabytes of RAM. Or $199 with a convergence package. So you could just connect it all up to your desktop or your TV, whichever. And that comes with um, 32 gigabytes of EMC and 3 gigabytes of RAM. Um, and that looks quite a... I mean, I've heard loads and loads of good stuff about the Pine phone. I know we've briefly said earlier that you see them on YouTube and they're swiping and it it doesn't seem as snappy, mm -hmm. but 
all I've heard is good reports from them. I mean, you know, especially at, at that price for um, an open source phone. I mean, it's hard to cr- criticize that stuff because, I mean, all this stuff is still being worked on, right? So it's going to get better. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it plasma. The, so the one that I looked at, Manjaro one has like the GNOME version or whatever of, uh, you know, mo- the mobile operating system of GNOME. Yeah. GNOME. Yeah. Um, and that's the one that looks looked, uh, you know, not all that responsive, but it's GNOME. So of course it's not responsive. GNOME's, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, is slow on a high end computer sometimes. So, but yeah. this one looks really good. And, and I was looking through some of these. Um, these photos and they're like oh this looks you know really good very high, highly polished and then you get to the you know towards the end and there's a, there's an image there that explains everything that's wrong with linux on mobile it has a picture of somebody doing click coding on a phone on a phone there's a picture of a of, of a of a note i mean it's supposedly a, a note taking app but it says it's a text editor um yeah if you look at ios is like website you don't see somebody coding on the phone <laughs> it's just like, yeah, that's not something no. i mean i understand that th- this is for developers and um you know but you're not gonna appeal to like mainstream people by showing hey look you can write python on your phone that it just sounds like a horrible experience i don't no, know that's just probably just me nitpicking <laughs> no how about yourself what's caught your eye this week all right so um i've always want so system 76 is a uh like a, I don't know how you'd explain it. It's a, it's a hardware vendor that focuses only on Linux-based devices, and they they make Pop OS, which is you know really good. Um, and some of their yeah. devices look you know very nice, but they're always so expensive. Um, and, and this one's not any you know any different. But every time they, they come out, so they've they've announced that they're um it's called the Galago Pro Linux laptop. It comes with the 11th gen Intel CPUs, and uh, I think it comes with like a it has Thunderbolt and um, I, can, I don't know what GPU it comes with. It's like I guess like the 2060, I think, um, maybe the 2080. I'm not sure, but um, it looks really nice. Um, it looks very high end, um, almost like Apple designed it. <laughs> it's, it just looks really nice. Um, it is really expensive. Like all 70. Like one day when I've won the lottery, uh, <laughs> I will buy a System 76. Um, device. Um, these just look really good, but they're just so expensive. I, I, yeah. I'm, I have yeah. envy for everybody who can afford them. Um, so. Oh gosh, I mean, it's a lovely bit of. Oh, well, at the end of the day, all the laptops are lovely pieces. Um, <clears throat> but it's a price point again for Linux. I mean, obviously you've got your power users that can afford that. Mm-hmm. But um, what's the price on this? Uh, twenty five hundred dollars um, is the highest it will go. Um, oh, it is does, that like it, your, your it, top specs? Yeah, so it starts off at nine ninety nine. So that's not too bad, really, I guess. Yeah. Um, but still, you know, just this is a stupid complaint, but I'd like to see. A, I, I mean, why aren't isn't there a hardware vendor out there that will? I mean, besides Pinebook, obviously, but why isn't there like a regular that uses an x86 vendor out there that will make a, a laptop or a desktop that is lower end like it starts at six hundred dollars um i mean that's that yeah. seems like it'd be very very you know um you, you know popular amongst some people who can't afford a thousand dollars for a laptop um i don't know it's, it's just me you know being yeah i mean it's that, n- that niche audience isn't it? i mean obviously if i mean i don't ex- exactly know how, what the sales are like <clears throat> but if they like add a quarter of the third or the third of the, the sales that Dell have, I suppose that price would probably drop because I'm guessing that they do them in batches as well. Mm-hmm. Like you've got to pre-order or wait in line because they can only produce 50 or 100 at a time and, and get it going that way. So I mean, hopefully the price will only go down. But like you, I mean, I've, I've got it in my eBay. Bay. Uh, wish list looking out for second hand ones it's not many in britain but <laughs> yeah that's the way you gotta buy stuff is buy it used because it's yeah. the only way you can afford it um i, I couldn't warrant that price yeah it's just i mean i okay i mean it's dumb because i mean i spent probably sixteen hundred dollars building my computer here that i'm on but it, <laughs> you know it's like the highest one you could build so, i mean that 999 one's gonna get you the lowest end one and it just make doesn't make the price doesn't really make much sense 
Plus, I mean, I, you, when you build the stuff yourself, you know, you, you yeah, you get to choose you know all the parts coming. and stuff. Um. Anyways, that's just me, you know, bemoaning my financial status. <laughs> no, so, no, they're, they're lo- lovely, lovely laptops, definitely. But yeah, budget on a budget, get yourself a Pinebook Pro. Um, I wouldn't recommend a Pine Tab, but I'd definitely re- recommend a Pinebook Pro. Yeah, I've looked at them. I just haven't had it. I always see that that warning that they put in their card or whatever. Um, yeah, dead pixels. Uh, about the dead that. pixels, like oh, I don't know. I mean, I, I know two hundred dollars is like really cheap for a laptop, and I'm complaining about the nine hundred ninety nine dollar one. So you really do get what you pay for. But do I really want one with dead pixels on it? And that's just, eh, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I understand I they want to just... warn people about it, but and maybe it'd be better if <laughs> they probably sell more of them if they didn't warn people. <laughs> that sounds shady. Yeah, I must. I must admit, I'll. On my point tab, I had a, a little cluster of dead pixels, and, and it's just what you gravitate straight to, isn't it? You see those dead pixels. But yeah, m- mine's been fine, the Pinebook Pro. So mm-hmm. hopefully, uh, but the screen on it's lovely. It really is nice. I have to. I, I'm next time I have a couple hundred dollars to spend, I'm definitely gonna look at look into it because I do need a new laptop. I have a, a really old Lenovo, um, and it runs fine, but the keyboard is trash. I mean, it's just. I mean, like the shift button, to, you know, is stuck and there's stuff underneath it. Yeah. I know you can replace those things, but I'm much too, you know, lazy to do it. <laughs> Anyways, all right. So our main topic this week is uh, uh, dual booting. I think, Martin, specifically, you wanted to talk about dual booting Linux and Windows, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's how I'd um, started my my journey, so to speak. Um, so I'd delved into MX Linux. Um Burnt it to um, an, burnt the ISO to a USB, and um, had the choice to in, install alongside Windows. Um, so obviously, I just tried out the live um, USB, um, came out, um, made sure I backed up all my stuff just in case um, anything did happen. Backed up all my programs and everything, and got that dual booting. Um, I mean. In terms of dual booting, I mean, it's fine. You have to mess about with Windows and, and stop the fast boot and things like that. But you, you just have to be careful because, I mean, you've got two operating systems that's actually on the same drive with their own bootloaders. Um, so you've got the Windows boot bootloader and you've got Linux um, running Grub handling everything. But, yeah, I mean, ideally what you'd you do want to do is have um, two drives. I mean, I've got a running on my um, M2 drive with um, Windows and Linux, but I make sure all my um, Windows data um, gets backed up to a, a separate. Is actually on a separate drive. So if anything does go wrong, I've, I've only lost um, my bootloaders for Linux and Windows really, because I, I, I automatically back up all my stuff anyway mm-hmm. but it, it, it's just it, it's it's we've all been there we've all either installed something or formatted the wrong drive when we've lost the data but anybody that would want to either dual boot i mean I, I know a lot of people don't want a dual boot but some people have to whether it's for work or mm-hmm. for programs that do still work i mean i've, I've only got windows on my computer really for um steam games that i haven't come through on linux and uh roblox for the kids <laughs> all right so i dual boot i or okay so i i say i do bo- dual boot but i have a partition for windows but i never use it um i i don't know if you know this about me but i hate windows with a passion <laughs> i mean i just despise it so and i didn't used to be like that I, I used to be a big windows user but now that i'm on linux i have a problem but i, I have it installed and because when i built this new computer i decided you know it has like a high-end processor and this great graphics card so i'm going to install windows so that i can play games yeah because yeah, like i mean most of it yeah I mean, that's the reason why you install Windows, because you want to play some games. Um, yeah. Mainly because, I mean, Steam is awesome and it allows you to play a lot of games on Linux that you you know wouldn't normally be able to do. But when you get to things that aren't in Steam, like um, anything made by Battle.net or, you know, like Hearthstone or Overwatch or any of that stuff, um, then you have to start doing with Wine and um, 
wine is terrible. <laughs> I mean, it's, wine's not. I mean, wine is you know awesome, but it's also not for stupid people. And I'm uh, I'm stupid people. Um, I just can't get yeah, it to work. Um, it's interesting with the Lark say to get to this game to work, you'll need wine version four point eight, or and that you're on different versions and try this version for this game it's like well it should really work for everything well that and it's always just, <laughs> i know it it's not the easier said than done <laughs> yeah it seems to me that i always get stuck on on wine by a font of some kind like oh like oh you're missing ms windows font ttf now you got to go find this crappy font and you know install it and yeah. like okay well i mean i've installed it but you want on on linux there's four different places where you can install fonts and not every program will look in the proper place where you put it, so you have to put it in all four different places. Then you have conflicting files. It's a, it's a, it's a mess. Um, and like I said, it's just not for it's, it's not for me. So I mean, you know, when I built a computer, I installed Windows on a partition, thinking that you know I'll do all this gaming and it's going to be awesome. And um, yeah, I never I never go into <laughs> into, into that partition. I still have it. Um, and it's tech, I mean, I have a terabyte uh, NVMe drive in this computer. Uh, you know, along with you know, a, a 500 gigabyte, you know, SSD and, and uh, two, two terabyte, you know, hard drive. So I have lots of storage. Um, yeah. But I just it, so that that that, that um, Windows partition has taken up like 250 gigabytes of stuff on my main drive, and I never use it. So I, uh, I, I the, the question I have for myself is when I eventually have to, you know reformat this drive and reinstall linux because every once in a while you you know nuke and pave will yeah. i will i continue to do and i don't know um in don't, that case it, it it's it, it's pointless really really isn't it so i mean you have just the bootloader and then you select it or does it time out and put you straight into linux all right so when, in arco it it does so the way i if it the way you learn to do it, I think I think most people figure this out, or, or maybe it was just me. Um, but if if you install Windows first, especially if you, all right, yeah. so if if you use like Ubuntu, it really doesn't matter which order you you do it, because it just, then it just whatever operating system you install last controls the bootloader. So if if you install Ubuntu first and then Windows, Windows controls the boot you know grub, um, and then you have to deal with Windows and all that stuff. Um, so yeah. if you always install Linux last, you and let Linux install, you know, control the bootloader and you know grub, it um, it, it does just time out. But it will, at least when it times out, it'll load you into Linux, which is what I want. I'd hate to have to go through and every single time I start my computer up having to, you know, oh, oh my God, it's giving me three seconds. If I don't get that hit that button in three seconds, it's gonna boot into windows and then i have to sit there and wait for windows to boot up which takes longer i have to log into windows in order to reshut it down but of course if you log into windows you have to wait for the ten thousand notifications windows sends you every time it starts up um <laughs> because windows startup times are horrible even on nvme like this is a fast hard drive it takes like t five minutes to get windows up and running to the point where there's nothing popping up and binging at you um and, and and if you're if you're lucky you you're not you don't have to sit there and wait for oh windows is, is installing upgrades um yeah as you can tell i don't like windows um <laughs> so I, <laughs> always always install linux last so that it controls yeah. the bootloader that's that's the yeah, main definitely. Thing I like. yeah um i mean in your case anyone i know he's talked about dual booty but um would, would you when you do nuke and pave and give it a fresh install, would you just um, stick Windows in a um, virtual box? All right. So I did a video um, not too long ago on how to do that. Um, and I would say no. Um, mainly because my purpose of having Windows to begin with is to play games. Um, and you can't play games in virtual box. I mean, I know, understand you could have a second graphics card and do a graphics path, graphics card pass through or whatever. Um, so technically, it is possible with some technical magic or whatever. Um, but if you just worth the hassle. Yeah, I I mean, even if I was just going to do like a, a non graphically intensive game like Hearthstone, I mean, Hearthstone doesn't take a lot of. I mean, you can play that on a smartphone. Um, but I don't think it would play very well in in a, in a virtual box. I'm gonna try it because if if I can play Hearthstone in a virtual machine on Windows, then I will never ever 
never have a dual boot again because, um, you know, because that's really the only game that I care about. Cause, yeah, because I can, because now that, especially now, Martin, that EA has all their stuff in Steam, um, there's a good chance that e, that a lot of that EA stuff that is the only other reason why you do boot into Windows for games might actually start working with Proton and stuff. So I think you play The Sims and SimCity and um, you know, Madden or Soccer or whatever um, inside Steam. And that might be a possibility that wasn't really there beforehand because beforehand you'd have to before you'd have to use uh, Origin through Wine and, and well, see previous. Origin to Nightmare on Windows at the best of times. <laughs> it is. It's so bad. On Linux. That's the reason why it was so great when they said that they were going to bring EA is going to bring all their full catalog to to Steam, which yeah, you know, it's no, just say again. Yeah, because in our Origin, no one wanted. To go through the hassle of downloading origin and then signing in and all that just just yeah. stick just bite the bullet stick it on steam yeah it's it's uh, so uh, weird because um you wouldn't think i mean ea is kind of notorious for not playing well with others um and yet they're bringing they're bringing all their ea stuff including their ea pass or whatever to steam they're bringing it to the xbox store they'll bring it to the playstation store so that you no longer have to use origin um, and then on the other hand, you have Epic, which does, you know, Fortnite and, uh, yep. um, the, um, the one with cars that plays with soccer. I can't, <laughs> uh, Rocket League, Rocket League. That's I went totally blank. Different. They have that and they took all their stuff out of steam, <laughs> right? Cause, cause they're, yeah. those, those two are mortal oh, enemies or whatever. Um, and, and to be fair, I'll look back into, well, I don't even have to look back into, um, Windows. I just log in, log into the Epic Game Store, um, weekly or fortnightly, to claim my free game. <laughs> oh, I didn't even know they offered free games because uh, was... yeah, they do some really good free games. I was so um... I, I kind of got so pissed off at at um at Epic when they took uh Rocket League out of the you know they took it away from Linux users. Like I like I, before it was free to play, it was twenty dollars. You know, so I paid twenty dollars, thinking, you know, hey, this is a game that works on Linux because it's in Steam. It's even Linux native. You know, it's not running through Proton. You know, and this is something that I can play. I paid twenty dollars for it, and now it no longer works on Linux. It, it, I mean, you can still use it through Proton sometimes um, if right. you're lucky, um, but it's not the same. It's not. It doesn't work because crossplay doesn't work anymore. Um, it's just. I mean, that's just so shady. Taking it from some somebody who you know, paid money for it and it's no longer working on the console they or the platform they bought it for. It's um, I don't know. That's just another rant. <laughs> it's just it's just another rant that you had to deal with from Matt today. It's, I'm just no, in, no, of course. in one of those moods. Um, I, I mean, I didn't realize that you dual booted. I mean, for, for what what you use Windows for, but I mean if. What obstacles have you run into? Have you run into data loss? Would you recommend dual booting? All right, so I don't really run into any problems anymore because I've done it so many times. Um, but when I first started, um, especially when I first started like using Arch-based distros, Arch does not like being installed first on a, on a partition if you're going to install Windows later. It just – it will not work. It will completely – mess up grub completely and your computer just won't even load um so mm -hmm. i made that problem i made that mistake probably three or four times because it's like oh you know you know i have i have my arch linux installed in here i've been using it for a while or whatever um i, I and i want to play hearthstone and i can't get hearthstone to play through wine because see aforementioned comments about wine um so i'm going to do a boot so you know i get into you know, Windows and Windows will actually go through and like all Linux installs will do as well. They'll actually let you repartition something that has, you know, has something already there. So it'll, let, it'll take a chunk out, out of uh, out of your um, existing partition in order to do that. And, that. and that was before I had this computer. So I only had one hard drive. So I couldn't do anything like that with a second hard drive and mess with trying to, to do uh, change the grub order and get grub to recognize a different hard drive and stuff you know I, I couldn't do any of that so at that point yes i you know i lost my entire install i mean it's not a big deal because i back up everything you know yeah. once or twice a week anyways um and at that point i was distro hopping a lot you know all the time so i mean losing stuff at that point I was like yeah 
Woohoo, I get to try yeah, out another yeah. distro. Like, uh, I saw it as an opportunity. But right now, if I had something wrong with you know Windows and Windows caused me to lose my Linux install now, I'd be devastated <laughs> because I've spent the last six. I mean, I can't. I install. I mean, I mean, you and I have only been acquainted for you know a few weeks, but prior to prior to like like May this year, um, you know, I was still distro hopping. You know, every other month or so. I get, you know, I get sick of, you know, uh, you know, um, Ubuntu. I try Ubuntu. I try, you know, OpenSUSE or whatever. Um, but in May, I started using Arco Linux, which is an Arch-based distro, um, and I've stayed there since May. I've never stayed that long on a distro, you know, ever. <laughs> you know, so uh, you know, I, I got this all configured the way I wanted to. I got, you know, every, t- you know, I, I spend time in getting my key bindings and every, all my window managers the way way I want. So now, if Windows messed that up for me, I would be so mad. Um, but like I said, most of my problems came when I first started. And would I recommend somebody dual boot? That's a question. That that's a question, Martin. I'm not. Sh- I guess my answer to that question would be if you have to. Um, if if you absolutely Safe. have to have some program that's on Windows that you can't get to run on Win- on Linux, um, then yes, it's better. It, in almost every way, dual booting I think is better than running in du- VirtualBox because I'm not sure what the limitation. Martin, maybe you can explain this this to me. In VirtualBox. You can only yeah. allocate 128 megabytes of video memory. Why is that a thing still today? Why? Why? Why is that some kind of technical limitation, or is they just not updated it so that I mean, almost every machine out there has at least four gigabytes of RAM out there, and most of them have eight or 16. Why can't you up that to a gigabyte of memory, or two gigabytes of memory, or why can't you just choose how much ever video memory you want to give it, and you know let that. I mean, if if it bogs down your main system, that's your problem. I mean, that's the way it should be. I mean, it has to be a technical limitation, right? Yeah, <clears throat> there must be some t- something to do with a hypervisor or something like that. Because I, I was playing about the other day, and um, I thought, all oh, right, yeah, you've got the green and red, right? Let's stick it into the red. Let's give it a, a bit more juice. I just come up with an error message. I had to knock it back down. Um, but the, the problems I was having was I'm um, trying to get a USB working in VirtualBox and sort of loaded the distro up. <laughs> no, I didn't even get that. I didn't even get that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a problem I was having recognizing the USB. I, I, I'm going to have to look into it because um, it was just um, tinkering about. Just open up VirtualBox, um, run Linux Mint, um, and then try and install Linux Mint from the VirtualBox onto a USB. Uh, but it just wasn't pl- wasn't discovering the USB. Obviously, there's something silly um, that yeah. I'm not doing, but I really don't know. I mean, there, some of the YouTubers get it working, so obviously yeah. there's something silly that I'm doing mm-hmm. wrong. So well, see, yeah, I, you'd, you'd... I had um, I don't have as much problem installing Linux and VirtualBox as I did Windows. I like like for for whatever reason, it seems to be fairly easy to install Linux and VirtualBox, but Windows was a pain that you know rear end it was it and and, you, and i did succeed and made a video about it but like i still can't get it to go full screen um I, I couldn't get a copy and paste to work it was a mess um so yeah that's the reason why uh, that'd be my answer uh martin mm. it, it, it you you dual boot if you absolutely have to that's what about you would you recommend it personally if you if needs must and you you're, you're quite technical I mean, obviously, we're not going to leave any links on our <laughs> below because um, we, we don't want to give you that information that'll end up bricking your system. But I mean, if it was, if I was doing it for somebody else, and like you say, they needed to, or an old laptop, let's just say, for example, laptop, you, you can only have the one drive um, unless you do to go for an external or one that'll fit into the CD. I would mean, probably recommend more if it was a noob or whatever, is um, a US, uh, USB with a persistent drive, which is what I've got as a backup if I ever lose anything so I can get back to work. Just plug it straight in, load it up from the USB and get straight to work. Be able to 
do that without any hard drives at all if, if you've ruined your system and I can also just take it around with me plug it into whatever laptop and, and have my system up and running there and then so I mean if needs but must I mean I definitely say if you can get along without Windows just just new compile the old lot and stick a nice um, beginner's distro on like, mm. like Arch <laughs> yeah, yeah. De- no 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 man come on Gen 2 Gen 2 definitely Gen 2 um, I'm going to try Gen 2 one of these days Martin I'm going to try um, man it looks hard because you got to compile your kernel and everything it's just that looks I mean I, I'm almost have to do it in a virtual machine because if I try to do it on my main machine it just scare the crap out of me all right, let's jump into our apps of the week. Um, Martin, why don't you go ahead and go first? Right, so my, the app I found is an app called Rambox. Um, it's a workspace browser, basically. It allows you to manage applications um, just in the, the one space. Uh, for example, I tried to use Skype earlier, but it wasn't working. I think I have to um, mess about with that a little. Um, so I've got installed in the same box um, Skype, uh, WhatsApp linked to my phone. I've got TweetDeck, my Google Calendar. I've added YouTube to it, um, my various email inboxes. And you've just got that all-in-one convenient app. I mean, I know I've to- told you about different apps before with Skype and Spotify and all that. Um, but these, um, I mean, looking at... Two seconds. So they've got a community editions, which is free. So you can have 99 plus apps. You can have Pro, which is $4 a month. And that's 600 plus apps, um, which is crazy. Um, but it, it, it's just like your, your normal um, web page opening up along the top, Skype, WhatsApp, Tweet, Gmail, what, whatever. And you'll just have the notifications on them when stuff comes in. So it is quite nice, especially if you've got a bit like yourself. You've got your own Twitter. You've got um, the show's Twitter, show's mm. Gmail. You, you could just have them all in, in one. So, I mean, yeah, it, it seems okay, apart from the Skype business, but that's um, user error on my side, no doubt. How I about wish it yourself? had a signal. I wish I had signal. It hasn't, yes. Yeah, it, it hasn't it's got... Just... I don't think... Signal's got a web app type thing, to be fair. Yeah, Signal. I I switched to Signal just for you know us, right? Yeah. Their Linux app is terrible. I mean, it's just bad. I mean, it, like it's not like on a on a like a tiling window manager when you want to put it into like a pane side by side with like Telegram or whatever. Um, it's not responsive. <laughs> so all you see is one, you know, one side of it, and you have to like use the little scroll bar at the bottom to s- switch back and forth. It's very annoying. Anyways, um, my pick is a um, is, <laughs> surprise, surprise. It's a terminal application called TG. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know. Um, hey, you want to run? If I don't recommend a terminal application, it, it's a uh, you know. Angels will die or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> anyways, TG is basically it's a, t- a terminal application for Telegram, um, and it has all the features of the regular Telegram, but without the overhead of running an Electron app. Um, and what's great about it is it allows you to use all your Vim commands or whatever, or your Vim key key uh, bindings to navigate the application. Um, and it has basically, I mean, it has some. Uh, oddness because of its being a terminal a- application like having to uh type in the path to a picture if you want to share a picture it's kind of annoying um mm. but you know it, it will allow you to go through and like share pictures and share audio and share videos and all that stuff you just have to learn the key bindings in order to do them um so it's uh i've just started i just started using it today um and i actually have it open like right next to skype it's cool um I don't think it's probably for everyone because I think most people would just think, yeah, Telegram has its own, uh, you know, regular app. Why use this? It's just if you like terminal applications that use little resources, this is an option, um, and it's open source and free and all, you know, all that stuff. So that's my pick. Oh, cool. One of these weeks you'll pick an email client in Terminal. 
Uh, Would you go Neomar, down that rabbit hello. hole? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the, yeah. The, the problem with... All right, so talk about a rabbit hole. Uh, Neo, Neo is cool, but I can't get to set up with Gmail, and I use Gmail. Um, I probably should stop using Gmail. Um, that probably would allow me to actually use NeoMutt, and I might do that. <laughs> I might do that <laughs> just because you know I'm I'm all for those terminal applications, but for whatever reasons, getting Gmail to set up in a in NeoMutt is just it's not it's damn near impossible. Anyways, that is it um, for this week. Uh, next week um, we're going to be talking about uh, note taking apps. So uh, I think we'll. Well, you know, that's an awful specific topic. I don't know why I chose that. Um, anyway, as of right now, that's what we're going to talk about. We might come up with a different topic because that sounds really weird. Why did I choose that? That sounds like a topic for a video <laughs> and not a podcast. But anyways, um, we'll have something to talk about next week, and uh, we'll see you then. Cheers, Matt. Take care, Dave.